I, I've been making this whole point about imitating the lives of the saints. I've been saying this stuff about Gregory and the spiritual, and we can carve this out for ourselves. The underlying point here is there is no difference between the life that a saint lives and the life that we are called to live. It's just called being orthodox. Right? On the one hand, it's holding to our faith as kind of a road map that guides us along. And on the other hand, it's actually doing it. Or trying to do it a little bit and getting up when we fail. The getting up when we fail, interestingly, that's actually part of the whole doing of it. So it works in quite nicely for us. Practice and practice and practice until we're perfect. That's, that's the basic idea. And you put those two things together, that's orthodoxy, but that's also what makes a saint. They just happen to do it. They just continue to do it. They don't quit. They don't give up. And, and that's the same kind of thing that, uh, that's being held out for us. So because of that, the point is that this is for everyone. And Gregory had this wonderful uh, sort of, I don't know, confrontation. He was a younger monk, and there's this an older monk. And this, this elder said to him, the Jesus prayer, this kind of stillness and this prayer of the heart, it's not for everyone. It's not for the lay people. This is only for monks. And Gregory, you know, said, well, you know, forgive me, but actually, and, and, but the elder insisted, so he kind of backed off. But you know what? Gregory knew that wasn't true. Why? Because he lived with Constantine, his own father. He saw that this was possible for lay people, that they could live this kind of life of prayer, even in their busy workday lives. And so, what happens? Well, there's a wonderful instance. The elder goes back to his, uh, his cell that night to do his monastic prayers, right? The ones that apparently aren't for the rest of us. Uh, and he's praying. And what happens? An angel appears to him. And what does the angel say? Gregory was right. <laughs> Not you. It is for everyone. And what did the elder do? In the spirit of, of a true elder, he went and he said to Gregory, the junior, forgive me, I was wrong. This is what happened. The angel came. You were right. right? That humility, that is, that is sort of a hallmark. Um, and so the point being, it's possible, right? It's so easy to think that the spiritual life is not for us. It's for the monks and the saints and the clergy and, you know, whatever. It's not. There's one gospel. We're all called to the same life in our own situation. Hence, back to the lives of the saints. Right? Find the situation that's yours and live it out. You know what? Maybe you're going to be the life that someday somebody else is reading that helped them in a situation. Right? You say, well, there's not a lot of lives of saints of married people or, or something like there you go. There's a challenge for you, right? Go live the Christian life and see what happens. And maybe someday, you never know. Maybe you'll have something useful at the very least, whether we become canonized saints or something. It's not the goal to become canonized saints. That's full of pride to sort of pursue that. But to say that this is the reality of the Christian life, uh, it's not about pride. It's just about the way things are. It's about salvation, right? It's about becoming like Christ, which is what this salvation is. And in the, just the very last point, because I've been going on way too long. Uh, I said to you the hardest point at the end. That to live the Christian life is a life of struggle. Everything I've just told you is about being, you know, about struggling. Whether it's just carving out time, it's painful. Whether it's getting up a little bit early, it's painful. Whether it's getting on a good schedule, it's a bit painful. So is exercise. So is learning to play the piano. So is learning to read. So is every other thing in your life of any value. The things in your life that are of, of the most value are things you've had to work for. And you've seen the fruit of that labor. It's exactly the same in the Christian life. So when we talk about struggle, or even when we talk about suffering, we need to take it and not see it only on this plane. We need to think about, okay, this is called medicine. No one likes medicine as it goes down. No one likes the surgery after the fact when you have to do, go through the hard work of healing. But at the end of the day, we're talking about transformation. We're talking about full health. We're talking about all these things. So the reason why I'm bringing this out from Gregory's life, he was persecuted by so many people. He was imprisoned for five years. He was excommunicated. He was called a heretic. He, uh, he was captured by these Muslim pirates, and he was taken around on show at the end of his life. So he had all this suffering before defending orthodoxy against heresy. 
And then, after the fact, you think, okay, now he can relax, right? No. God says, no, here's the next thing. And he travels around as a, as a, a prisoner for a year, uh, you know, yeah, with, the, with the Muslims. But God used it as an opportunity because every place Gregory went, he was preaching. Every time he was brought around, he was allowed to engage in, in theological debates. And he stood up for the faith that he believed in. He was a confessor. That was the mark of his life. Uh, but we have suffering in this life. We need to think about it as an opportunity rather than as a curse. We don't believe suffering is a curse. That's not a Christian teaching. Certainly not an Orthodox Christian teaching. Suffering is not God abandoning us. Suffering is an opportunity for healing and for transformation. It is what we do with that that makes all of the difference. Uh, Gregory took it and used it to defend the faith so that all of us could be here today as Orthodox and not as Muslims. Um, realistically. So, uh, so this is a very sort of instructive point. Holiness begins in the home. You guys can do it. We can all do it. Just small little steps. One little step. Okay? Towards holiness and away from selfishness. One step towards God and away from ourselves. That's all. Right? True education as... Yes, we're going to educate ourselves, but for what purpose? For our salvation. For the perfection of our lives. And we're going to use our worldly education to build up the church, to build up the people around us, to build up you know, our, our practice of the faith. We're going to put that into practice in our lives, just in little micro bits. Carve out five minutes of stillness. Can you guys, can you, can you maybe hopefully try to promise me today you're going to go away from here and try to find five minutes in your day. I'm saying take your watch in. Time yourself. Okay? Put your little timer on. You're going to go in, in quiet, in stillness, no phones, no computers. Okay? You can look, you can look after the kids when they do that? Wait till the kids go to sleep. <laughs> and, and you might fall asleep in your bed. Sit up for the first five minutes, at least for the first four. And then the last one, you're going to hit the pillow. Okay? Find, there's, listen, there's always a place we can carve this out. Uh, somewhere. And add Lord of Mercy to it. Say, Lord of Mercy, Lord of Mercy, but better than Jesus' prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, the mercy of God. Lord Jesus Christ, the mercy of God. Lord Jesus Christ. Say it quickly, for that five minutes. And just say, I'm not going to do anything else. And you'll see what will happen. Uh, this is for all of us. So let's struggle, my brothers and sisters. It's possible. We can do this. And when we fall... <coughs> We can just get back up again. That's all God wants. Just for us to keep getting up. That's it. Uh, and and understand that suffering is part of what it is to struggle to be a Christian. It's going to be tough. You know, we have opposition all around us. I don't have to go into that with you, I don't think. Right? To hold a faith today, to maintain our orthodoxy is very, very difficult. People want to say, that's foolish, that's old, that's silly. You need to get with the times. Resist. Resist, hold to the faith, and try to put it into practice. You take those two sides of that one gold coin, and you can hand it to Christ on the day of judgment and say, Lord, here is my talent back with interest. So may it all be possible for all of us through the prayers of the, the Holy St. Gregory Palamas. Amen. Amen.